I want to welcome you to another session of our Tefillah 101 class as we continue our in-depth learning of Damida as we uh, near the final few classes as tonight is going to be Yehi Leratzon Imrefi Ve'yon Nibir Fanecha Hashem Tzui Ve'goali section which is literally the closing words of the Amidah and some additional supplications. Uh, before we get started with tonight's class, uh, one of the last few classes in this series, I'd like to give an honorable mention and dedications to the following people. Yidbarach Shemo Shakadosh Baruch Hu Be'ezat Hashem this class will be to the Refuah Shelema of Heleni Orna Batchenchana, Keren Chava Badona, and Yaakov Ben Dina. Also, that this class should be to the uh, to the general success of our Yisachar and Zevulun sponsors, Noam Avidar and family, Rina Naron Perkel and family. Uh, also, to our main sponsor tonight, David Ker- uh, David and Karen Chava Badona, who are sponsoring tonight's class, the Ilun Ishmat of Bin Yamin, Abraham Ben Shlomo, and <coughs> Pakita. Also, there's a that tonight's. Are we recording? Yeah, if you said also that this tonight's class will be uh, a, to in honor of Yehudit Ben Shabbat, who is dedicating tonight's class to her son Asher Meir. I'm sorry, Noam Ali Melech, who uh, today is his birthday. Be'ezat Hashem that Noam Elimech will grow in Torah, mitzvot, ma'asim tovim, yet tzaddik, gdol ador, yale ma'ala ma'ala ba'avodot Hashem itbarach, as well as her other sons, Asher Meir and Shammai, Bnei Yudit, and Be'ezat Hashem that the Ben Shabbat family have health, wealth, success, v'achav ha'tzachan, all they do, and that Yudit should have nachat from her children, as well as Osher uh, v'chavod la'avodat Hashem itbarach, and azivu gagun mishor shishmata, Amen. Okay, well, let me see if I have a few more over here. Also, this class should be to the Ilun Ishmat of David Ben Zohar in Iverina, Michel Ben Zohara, Aviv Ben Vivi, Esther Batalia, Bamisha Ben Sultana, Simon Ben Alia, Mazal Batluna, Meir Ben Rebecca, Sultana Bat Frecha, Shalom Alechem, Yitzchak Ben Sevilla, Nisim Ben Meir, Rachel Bat Bela, Yaakov Ben Tamar, Susan Bat Shaba, Yehuda Ben Aaron, Brendan Bat Meir Dov, Shalom Ben Zohara, and, and Hannah Bat Hava. Okay, let's get started. So, as we reach the end of the Amidah, we already did the 19th Beracha last week. We're reaching the final words in the Amidah, and also a section where you can add additional supplications. So Baruch Hashem, after a very lengthy introduction and a very thorough study of the Amidah, the 19th Berchot, we come to the last, 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 last part of the Amidah. Uh, these are our parting words uh, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as well as the opportunity to add additional personal supplications. Tonight, we'll focus on how to wrap up the Amidah. And we'll analyze the final text of the Amidah. There's also a few halakhic guidelines of this section that are very important to know, to understand, and to follow. And also, which supplications one can add. As a matter of fact, there's a whole section, Masechet Brachot, on the 16th and 17th page, of all the supplications that the rabbis used to, uh, each rabbi and his uh, personal supplications. Of course, a person can also personalize it himself. We'll touch on that later on in the class tonight. So let's start with a quick refresher. We know that the structure of the Amidah is that the first three are the first three Berachot and the last three Berachot are always the same in every single Amidah. The first three Berachot are Shevach, praise to Kadosh Baruch Hu. The last three Berachot are Hoda'ah, where we were grateful and thankful for Hashem. And the center 12 Berachot are Bakashot, personal requests that we make for the needs, for our personal needs, our collective needs, uh, our personal needs, and Ami Sael's needs as uh, physical and both spiritual. Now that we wrapped up all 19 Berachot, 18 plus 
Alaminim, number 19 of Shmuel HaKatan, uh, that he added. We know that the final section of the Amidah had a very strong uh, emphasis on the concept of peace and its important in our, importance in our lives. Uh, we sort of uh, transitioned through Birkat Kohanim and came to the final Bercha of HaMevarech et Amo Yisrael Bashalom that Hashem blesses the Jewish people with peace. And then we get into this final section called the Hiratzon Elokai Netzor Shoni Mera. And then uh, there is Ose Shalom Bivomav, Huber Hamav Yase Shalom Alenu Bakom Yisrael and Amen. Ose Shalom Bivomav is going to have its own class. We're going to have a whole class just for that last uh, part of the Amidah, and we're going to have a t take a deep dive into the concept of peace, of Shalom. I, we know we touched on it in previous classes, but we're going to go really deep into it uh, in, in, the, in the next class. So here we are. Let's just uh, refresh our minds. Baruch Atah Hashem, HaMevarech Et Amo Yisrael BaShalom. HaKadosh Baruch Hu blesses the Jewish people with peace. Amen. Because uh, Shalom is the, is the vessel that holds all the blessings. It's the vessel that is able to hold, uh, uh, hold all the blessings of all the berachot that we've uh, put our effort into praying and asking for all these, uh, for all, for all the, our uh, personal needs and our spiritual needs and our collective needs. So now we need a vessel. What's that vessel that's going to hold all the blessings? It's the vessel of peace. We say Amen. And now we come into the last part of the Yamidah. And right away, it starts with a very famous Pasuk that maybe you've read it a thousand times in your life, but you've never uh, looked at it in the way that we're going to look at it tonight. It says, That it should be wa wanted and desired, the words that are coming out of my mouth, the words that I'm saying. And all my thoughts that are, uh, or, or all the things that I'm uh, have in my heart or in my mind that I wasn't able to 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 uh, to say in words, but my thoughts and my feelings. So you let that they should be wanted, desired, accepted. My words and my thoughts and my feelings. Hashem tzuri vegoali, Hashem my rock and my redeemer. That Hashem is going to is, is the the rock that we rely on for in our entire life, and He's also our Redeemer. He always redeems us from all the troubles that we get ourselves into, and also the final redemption. Amen. This pasuk, we're gonna stop here for a second, because this pasuk, you leratzon imre fi vehegion libi lefanecha. Adonai Tzuri Begoali has an incredible amount of depth to it. It says, Pasuk ze mesuga lekama inyanim. This particular Pasuk is auspicious for many, many different things. First, let's get some statistics on it. Let's get some details on this Pasuk. Techilato Yud Vesofo Yud. This Pasuk begins with the letter Yud and ends with the letter Yud. Tevotav Yud. There's 10 words. Ve'yud yudin yeshbo, and there are ten yuds inside the entire pasuk. Ve'yeshbo membet otiyot. It also has forty-two letters. Ve'sodo sod gadol, and it's a very big, big secret. All these things that we've just shared with you, and we, even though that we've just detailed all these different things that are uh, that are in, uh, embedded in this pasuk, we have no idea what that means. That it begins with a U, it ends with a U, that it has 10 U deem, that it has 42 letters, it's compiled of 10 words. But even though they're letting us know that it's a big secret that is embedded in this in this Pasuk. That's why a person has to say this Pasuk slowly, and he has to have a proper intention on it. And by saying this Pasuk, it helps a person's prayer be answered, be heard, and his prayers will not come back, will not return unanswered. Who knew? We just spent all this time on these 19 Berachot and Da'amida. Comes this one Pasuk, and apparently it's this turbo boost power, mega packed spiritual Pasuk that just saying it 
helps out a lot in our prayers to be heard. What's interesting is that we repeat it just a minute later. Because this Pasuk, comes back again right before it says Shalom. So we say it actually two times before the end of the Amidah. So we want to go a little bit deeper to understanding why is it so important that this Pasuk is included in this part of the Amidah and the fact that it's being used two times and what is uh, you know, the deeper meaning of this Pasuk being here and specifically here. Masechet Brachot on the fourth page and the second side and on the ninth page and on, uh, on the second side uh, uh, chimes in about this section of the Amidah. Amar Rabbi Yochanan Betechila Kodem Tefilat Amidah Omer Hashem Sefatai Tiftah Ule Basof Omer Yilotson Mefi he says, if you pay attention, we started the Amidah. Remember, one of our first few lessons was, Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agitelatecha. That's the opening line of the Amidah. And then we have this um, very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, powerful pasuk, Adonai tzuri ve'goali. The Gemara is saying, maybe the Amidah should have started with this pasuk. Not with Hashem Sefatai Tiftach Ufi Agiti You have to work first on the Kavanah and everything, and after you come to this person. That's good, that, that, that makes sense. The Gemara uh, gives us an answer on the ninth page on the second side. Halo Pasuk Zeh Ha Mitparesh Kevakasha Hen Ala Tfilot Sheit Palel Ven Ala Tfilot Sheit Palel Umadu Alu Nikva Lo Amor Kodem Atfila. If you pay attention, uh, to the to the text, it says, meaning this pasuk says that the words that I'm going to say, let them be leratzon in front of you, let them be desired, wanted by uh, by Kadosh Baruch Hu. So that's a that's a good start on Amida. Why wasn't this pasuk the pasuk that we started the Amida with? ותרצה הגמרא, כי כיוון שאמרו דוד בסיום י"ח פרשיות שבתהילים, היינו בסיום מזמור י"ט, על כן קבעו החכמים אחרי י"ח ברכות. What a strange answer. The Gemara tells us, you know why it's not the opening פסוק of the Amida? It's because דוד המלך wrote this פסוק, הילה רצון ומפי, in the 19th chapter of his Tehillim, and because it shows up over there, it should show up here. So, to get a deeper understanding of that, first things first, you should know that the first and the second chapter of Tehillim are considered as one. They're actually all in the same subject matter, but they split it into two, but they count it as one. And if you go and fast forward 18 Berachot, it takes you to Perek Yutet, to the 19th chapter. And how ironic that the 19th chapter of Tehillim corresponds with the 19th Berachot of the Amidah. The Gemara tells us there's a correlation. There is a connection between Tehillim and Tefillah. There's a correlation between number 19 in the Amidah and number 19 in Tehillim. So... Let's start. And by the way, if you open up the 19th chapter of Tehillim, happens to be the last pasuk. It's actually the last pasuk of that chapter. So if you ever want to see it, to find it inside, the last pasuk of chapter 19 is the, is the pasuk that we're talking about right now. So let me read what Hazal tells us. Mifdi. So they asked me the question over here, why did they put it at the end? They should have said it in the beginning. So once again, Chazal is telling us, you know why 
the Amida didn't start with Yehulah Ratzon Mefi, which would seem more appropriate because it says that that it that, that my speech, my prayer that I'm about to pray should be wanted and desired by God. That's something you say before you pray. It is more appropriate. Why is it not placed in the beginning? Because it needs to be at the end in order to match up David Hamelech's Tehilim that put it in number 19. We put it after number 19. What's the connection? What's the connection between 19 Berachot of Amida to 19 chapters of Tehilim? So, I found a beautiful Hidush on it. I want to share it with you. It says that Tefillah and Tehilim have a similar role in molding the events of the entire universe. That's a huge statement. I'm going to have to say it again. I'm going to yes. say it slowly. Yes. Prayer, which is Tefillah, Tehilim, play identical or similar roles in molding the events of the entire universe. This book and this book. Your Sidor and your book of Tehillim have a tremendous amount of power in molding the events of the entire universe. I feel like I could say that the entire class will be powerful every time. It says that the entire it says that words of prayer activate spiritual forces. When we pray, we're actually able to activate spiritual forces in the universe. And these spiritual forces dominate the physical universe. Also, the words and letters of the Torah are the blueprint and the building blocks of the universe. So we have prayer words activate Torah words and prayer letters activate Torah letters. So I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to simplify it in a second. But I just want to read this last section over here. When you connect the Torah with Tehillim, meaning let's if we try to we if we try to connect the Torah with Tehillim, Moshe Rabbeinu taught Am Yisrael how to rule the world through the Torah. David HaMelech continued the mission of Moshe Rabbeinu by showing how to rule the world through Tehillim, which brings us closer to the Torah. And in the same vein, Anshek Neset Agdola, men of the great assembly, demonstrated how to control the world through prayer, which brings us closer to both Tehillim and Torah. Let me simplify that to you. It's a little bit uh, complicated, but what they're, basically what it's trying to tell us is this. Torah is the blueprint to the universe. Tehillim or Tefillah move forces in the universe. Moshe, he taught us how we're able to rule over the world with Torah. David HaMelech continued to show us how we can rule the world through Tefillah, through Tehillim. And on Sheikh Neset Akdola, the men of the Great Assembly, showed us how to control our world with prayer, which brings us closer to Torah and Tehillim. So we see that what we have over here on Sheikh Neset Akdola, sort of like interlaced everything into this one pasuk over here, showing us that the words of the Torah, which are, have power to create the universe, the words of Tefillah, which have the power to move the universe, are all coming here together in this pasuk in order to match up what David Amelech is doing and what Moshe Rabbeinu is doing and what Anshat Nesetak are doing to show us the power that we have in our Torah learning, in our prayer, and overall in our speech. We have power. And they're hinting to all that by the placement of this pasuk over here, because apparently this is a mega pasuk. Don't let's go back. We'll have, what's going on with this pasuk? It's got starts with the yud, ends with the yud. It has ten yudim in it. It's uh, it's uh, it has uh, ten words in it. It has forty-two letters in it, and all this is so this so dot. Secret of secrets. 
So there's a, a, a unique place for this particular pasuk because we're interlacing all the powers of the Torah, all the powers of the Tehillim, all the powers of the Tefillah. And on Shek Nesat HaGdurah says, this is the place, the right place for this pasuk because it's, it's bringing all the worlds together. Furthermore, to add another layer of understanding to this, it says in Masechet Brachot, on the 16th page, on the uh, 16th page on the second side, and on the 17th page on the first side, it tells us that the sages would have additional supplications that they would have at this section after the Amidah. And they would come to the section of Elokai Netzor, which is right after this Pasuk. And one of the supplications of the rabbis, who is called Mar Bere de Ravina, who authored Elokai Netzor, which is a section that we're about to learn, was accepted widely by everyone as part of the prayer, and it actually made it into the... Uh, it actually made it into the uh, Amidah. And I'll just read to you, if you go into the Gemara, wh what is his exact uh, text, exact uh, wording. So it says in Masachet Brachot, on the 17th page on the first side, Mar Bered Rabina, Kehava Mesem Tzalute Amar Hachi. So it says, Mar Bered Rabina, when he used to finish his prayer, he used to say this, Elokai, Netzor Leshoni Mera. By the way, Rabbi Shimshin Pincus says, "What it asks a question? What is the most beautiful word in the entire Amidah? Think about it. You just learned all the Amidah. We did like forty classes. What is your favorite word of the Amidah? Teilatecha, Shalom. So Rabbi Shimshin Pincus says something incredible." He says his, he was telling this to his children when, there was, when he was teaching them uh, a prayer. He says, you know what is, my, what is the, the most incredible word in the entire Amidah? Elokai. My God. He says that word Elokai, that you know that there's a God and He's your God and you're speaking to Him. The most beautiful word in the entire Amidah is my God, Elokai. Because it says so much. That you believe in God and He's your God and you're speaking to Him. So it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, little uh, point that he made. I wanted to mention it right here. Nevertheless, let's go back to the supplication of Mar Bare de Ravina. As he says, Elokai, Netzore Shoni Mera, Usiftotayim de He says, Block my mouth from speaking evil speech and from my lips from speaking deceit. Urim Kalelain of Shitedom, and anyone that curses me. Let me uh, 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 let me stay silent. And my soul should be like uh, dust to everyone. Open up my heart to your Torah and let me chase, let, that my soul should chase uh, mitzvot. And save me for any bad happenings in the world, from the evil inclination, from a bad woman, and from all evil things that should come onto, into the world. And anybody that thinks negative uh, uh, towards me, Mehera, quickly, Hafer Atzatam, ruin their thoughts, foil their, their plans. Foil their, uh, their, their, their plans. And there's that Pasuk again. There's a Yile Ratzon Pasuk again. And this is what became adopted as part what the, the what Masechet Brachot brings as a supplication of Ma'am Be'ed Ravina became part of our Amidah because it, uh, it, it became a supplication that was well accepted by the masses. Furthermore, it says that this Pasuk that we're talking about, Yile Ratzon Ivefi, is an especially significant pasuk that adds immense power to our prayers. Who knew that there was so much going on with this pasuk, immense powers to our prayers. I want to add an additional layer to this pasuk. It says, Mm -hmm. 
the English definition of May the expressions of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, Hashem, my rock and my redeemer. It says, sometimes we, we, we say words without thought. And what happens? You come all the way to the end of the Amidah. You did 19 Berachot. And what happens? You realize you did the whole Amidah with no Kavanah. So what do you say? May the expressions of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you. In other words, at the very last moment we realize we did not internalize our prayer. And that we only said words which did not penetrate us. It's not too late. The moment of real, realization is invaluable. And we can actually salvage our entire prayer with this momentary awareness. Even if you come to the an entire Amidah, you're like, wow, I missed the whole Amidah. But you say, Hashem All of a sudden, you're activating the, the, the awareness. And, and it actually uh, closes up the Amidah in a very strong way. And that's why we have a prayer after the main prayer. Because if we already finished the 19 Berachot, sign off. Why, why do we have to continue? It says you have to continue because maybe there's a chance that you don't have a Kavanah in the entire Amidah. So on Sheikh Nesit Agdullah says, let me give you something to help you out. I'm going to put a super powerful Pasuk at the end of the Amidah. That it says that let the expressions of my mouth, that even I was just yapping, right? And the thoughts of my heart, meaning, you know, my, my thoughts initially are always good. I want to pray to God. I want to be good. I want to be a mitzvah boy. You know, all those things, right? Find favor before you. Even if the whole service before was subpar. But by saying this pasuk, we're trying to sort of like give a, 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 a tremendous amount of credit to everything that we did with Ad Kavanah to be with Kavanah. It's the end of the tefillah. You had no kavanah. This is the last chance to switch that around. On that concept of uh, prayer with kavanah and no kavanah, I wanted to add something that I found. We learned from this book a lot in the beginning of the of this series. Uh, tefillah Dele says something very interesting about tefillah that is no kavanah. Because we could find ourselves in a reality that we prayed the entire Amidah, and our mind was where? Stock market, Bitcoin, Publix, children, uh, this, that, whatever we thought about last night, whatever we're dealing with in the morning. So sometimes you get into the Amidah, you finish the Amidah, and you're like, whoa, whoa, what just happened? I just went to the entire Amidah, I don't even remember if I bowed, I don't remember if I said, I don't remember if I had Kavanah. So what happens to those tefillot that sometimes go that way? Tefillot that have no intention, tefillot that don't have kavana. So he says, "Afilu tefillah bli kavana, moelet vichashuva beinei makom." He says, "Don't think that your tefillah that had no intention is useless. It has value and is important in the eyes of God. It brings from the Chatam Sofer, Kashe Adam itpalel tefillah achad bekavana shlema. That when a person prays one tefillah with intention." All those sub subprime or sub you know subpar tefilot, the ones that had no kavana, the ones that were like you know, and you weren't fully there, and they didn't go up, they stayed down here. The minute a person has a proper tefillah with kavana, it picks up, it piggybacks all the other tefilot that go up to the shemay. Furthermore, the Zohar says, "Yesh malach barakia hamemune al kol atefilot absulot shenamru bli chavanat alev." He says there's actually a, an angel in the heaven that is responsible for all the tefilot that are not said with kavana. And what does this angel do with the tefilot that don't ascend to the heavens? Kulan loke chamalach umachzikan bishutom amtin. He takes them. And he deposits them with him, with him. 
אם עושים תשובה על פעלים יפה בכוונה כראוי בתחנונים, אזי יוסף המלאך את כל אשר תפילות מאוד צרו, ומעלה אותן יחד עם אותה התפילה הטובה שנאמרה בכוונה. It says that when a person does a proper teshuvah process, and he prays properly, and he does a tefillah that is uh, with intention, he brings all those uh, tefillot, those damaged tefillot from his treasure house, where he keeps all those broken tefillot, and he allows them to go up together with that one good tefillah, and he brings all the tefillot, the one good one, and let's say the thousand, uh, you know, sub prar uh, uh, tefillot in front of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and they're received. So we see that sometimes we, we beat ourselves up over, oh, I could have prayed better, I didn't have kavana. what's going on? Don't worry. The time that you do get the proper uh, tefillah going, it will pick up all these uh, inferior tefillot that you had throughout the year. Furthermore, it says, continuing in, on this point, it says, אם היצע הרע ניצח אותך ברפאנו, אתה תנצח אותו בברך עלינו. He says, let's just say that the Yetzirah beat you in Refa'enu, in the Berakha that has to do with healing. That what? You had no Kavana in Refa'enu. Don't say, ah, that's it. Ma'amida is shot. I have no more, uh, I, you know, I have a Tefillah with no, with no Kavana, with no intention. The advice that Chazal gave us is Tenatzeach Oto B'Barech Elu The following Barech is Barech Aleinu about the Parnasa Have Kavana over there If he beat you in Refaenu, you beat him in Barech Elu In other words, the Chafetz Chaim says that if the Yetzirah was able to beat you to not have Kavana in one Barech don't despair As soon as you go to the next Barech have Kavana over there, you'll be fine don't take the mentality of all or nothing. Grab what you can. Sometimes what do we do? We're perfectionists. If I don't do it perfect, I don't want to do it at all. Hafez Chaim says, no, no, no. You might have lost one. You might have lost two. You might have lost three. Grab number four, grab five, six, seven, eight. Whenever you wake up, because sometimes we, you know, we just take off running. And before you know it, we're already in the Alat Tzadikim, Alat Chassidim. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I forgot to pray for Parnasa. I forgot to pray for Rafu. I pray, uh, I'm almost by Modim. That's okay. Hafez Chaim says, have Kavana on the next one. They'll make up for the other ones. As it says in Masechet Avot, Lo alecha melecha ligmor, velo ata ben chorin dbatel mimela. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to finish all the job. But you can't hold yourself back from doing a proper work when you are able to do it. הקדוש ברוך הוא יעזור לכל אחד ואחד ויתחיל תורם להתחזק בעניין כוונת תפילה והבא לטהר מסעין אותו. He says, הקדוש ברוך הוא is looking for the people that are making effort. Just make an effort and all people that have the, uh, the desire to become better, כל הבא לטהר, anybody that comes to get uh, holy, purified, that wants to become better, מסעין אותו. He gets heavenly help from the heavens. So don't despair if you didn't have, uh, if you didn't have כוונה. In one or two or any, any way you catch yourself with no kavana, come back and hear tonight's lesson. What is it teaching us? Even after 19 berachot with no kavana, what do you do? Over there, that activates it all. You can catch it there because you can say, "Wow, I finished the amida." And Sheikh Nesayidullah like said, "Yes, you did finish the entire amida." And even if you didn't have kavana, we put this mega powerful pasuk for you in order to activate. The, uh, t to give you a, 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 a big powerful boost for your, te for your tefillah to still be accepted. I want to stop right here and, re and, and uh, discuss some halachic ramifications to this section of the Amidah. So we finished all 100, I'm sorry, all 19 uh, berachot. And we know that during the Amidah, there's no talking. You can't answer. If let's say you're praying and in the middle of your tefillah, you have uh, Kedusha, uh, you have uh, 
Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo, you have Amen. Or, or maybe you're in a part of, of the Amidah and you're still praying, and all of a sudden there's a, a Baruch Hu, I mean, there's Kedusha, there's Alenu Leshabach. Can you answer all these things? So we know that the entire Amidah, you cannot. As a matter of fact, the only thing that you're allowed to do in the entire Amidah is pause. When they do the Kedusha, Nagdishak, Venaritzak, you pause. You activate Shomea Keone. By listening, it counts for you as if you replied, as if you participated. And that gets you out, that gives, that gives you a check mark on Kedusha. However, if you want to participate in everything, in saying Kedusha and answering Amen, in this section of after the 19 Berachot, there are some halachic ramifications that we should learn. Yalkut Yosef in Siman Kuf Bet says, After you finish Birkat Sim Shalom, and you get to the Pasuk of Yehi Leratzon, which is what we're, the, the, you know, the first Pasuk that we're learning tonight. Rashai Lafsik Laniyad Dvarim Shebekdusha. He says, after saying Yehi Leratzon, at that point right there, even though you're still Namida, you can stop and you can answer things that are connected to Kedusha. Like what? Chamisha Amenim Rishonim Shela Kaddish. You can answer the first five Amens of the Kaddish. And you could also answer After the first Yehiratzon, you can answer Amenim, the five Amenim, and Yehoshem Eraba. That's it. Nothing more. But remember we said there's a second one. There's the one at the end. So, so what happens when you get to the second Yehiratzon? So it says over here, Well, let's, uh, let's continue. There's more. Let's go back to the first one, okay? The first year it's on. So, five Amenim and Yeheshem Eraba. Velo Yane Amenim de Brachot. If you see here Brachot, you don't say Amen to the Bracha. Vafilo Amen Shachar Bikata El Kadosh Vishoma Tefila Shomer Shariak Tibu. There's no Amenim in this section. You are only allowed to say Amen for Kadish. Ubigdusha One Kadosh Ubaruch Bilvad. And on this first section, you're able to say, when they do Nagdishach and Naritzach, you say, Kadosh, 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 we can participate with the, with the Kahal. And that's it. And So we know when we get to the Kedusha, we have three things that we say. What do we say? Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. And what's the last one? You don't say the last one. So when we get to the first if there's a Kaddish, we answer five Amenim and Yehoshem Rabba. If there's a Kedusha, we say Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh and and Yehoshem. And the Baruch Shem, I'm sorry. And that's it. And you don't say the, fa- the last one. And of course, you don't, if you, if you can't answer Amenim for other Berechot, Kal Vachomer, that you don't answer Berechu Baruch Shemo. Now, <coughs> when you get to the last one, what can you do? Everything. You can do all the, the, uh, all the Kedushim, all the Amenim, all the Yehoshem Rabbah, you can answer Amen to Berachot. You can even do Kedusha, full Kedusha, and you can even say, uh, you can even say, Baruchu Baruch Shemo to Berachot. And even over there, you can stop and do supplications. You can add your stuff. So we can see that over here, and, and if you remember, if you recall, that we said for a person is supposed to pause and pray and add personal supplications in Shomea Tefillah. But if he knows that if he stops in Shomea Tefillah, and then by the time the Dominion gets the part of doing the Chazara, he's still going to be there, and he's not going to be able to respond, and they need him to respond because it's a small Minyan or whatnot, then what does he have to do? 
he skips Shomer Tefillah and he goes to the end of the Yili Ratzon, the second Yili Ratzon, and over there he says all the things that he was doing in Shomer Tefillah. Why? Because over there you could do everything. When you get to the last one of Yili Ratzon, then you can do everything. You're still in Amidah. You can still answer to Kaddishim. Yeshem Rabbah, Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo, Kedusha, and you can still add your personal prayers and you're still inside the Amidah counting as if you're praying as part of a Minyan. So it's very, very important to know according to Halakha where you can stop and where you can go and where's the proper place. If we have to, you know, categorize it, Grand Central Station is the second Yehul Ratzon. That place over there, everything goes. So, halakhically, it's good to know that that's what's allowed to be done over there. But however, remember, when we get to the first one, only the first five Amenim and only Yeheshem Rabbah. For some of you that might have a Sephardic Sidur, it's recommended that after the first Yehil Eratzon, that you can add Shara Kavanot and the Chida. Say Shara Kavanot says that it's good to say the Menorah, the the the, the Nusa of. I think we have it over here. Sometimes you'll see at the end of the Amidah. There's this section right here, where you have a menorah and Shir Lama'alot. So, Shara Kavanot, I'm sorry, Shara Kavanot says that it's good to read the menorah in the shape of a menorah right here. And we could do an entire two-hour class just on about the menorah and reading it in this shape. But just to know that it's very powerful. And then the Chida says that the Shir Lama'alot, Esayna El-Arim, Ma'anyo Ve'ezri, one should read it over here. And a small little footnote, when you read Shir Ma'alot, always have in mind the collective needs of Am Yisrael, not for you personally. And those two are also additional supplications that are mentioned. And most Sephardic Sidurim, or definitely the Sidur Kori Nebi Shua, has this in every single Amidah, if you want to check that as well. Now that we sort of spent some time on just the first, first Pasuk, in the end of the Amidah, let's go into the explanation of the text. So I'm going to do it both in Hebrew and English. It says, Elokai. Again, Rabbi Shem Shabinka says, with the most beautiful word in the entire Amidah is Elokai. My God. Netzor Leshoni Mera. Hashem, you should protect my tongue from speaking evil, like evil speech, gossip, slander, things that are forbidden. Vesiftotai Midaber Mirma. And protect my lips from speaking things that are not honest, not true, that there are lies. And I should not be a, 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 a liar or a fraud that when I speak to somebody, it should be in a way of mirma, of crookedness. So we pray, we're praying right now of, of how we should uh, use our speech properly. And to the ones that curse me, nafshiti dom. I should stay silent and not answer them. Venafshi ke'afar kol and that my soul should be like dust. That just like everybody steps on the dust, every, it's the lowest for it's the lowest thing in the world. So shall be my 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 soul. La kol I should all all I should be beneath all people. That I shouldn't be have pride and and be above anybody else. Should, nobody should, I shouldn't be above anybody else. Uh, open up my heart so I can understand your Torah. And let me, uh, help me that I should run after 
performance of mitzvot. Vechol hakamim alay lera'ah, and all those that get up to uh, harm me, mehera hafer atzatam, quickly nullify their thoughts, cancel their thoughts, cancel their intentions. Vekalkelet machshevotam, and, and, and foil their thoughts while they're still thought, meaning before they get up and turn it into action, ruin their thoughts already. Aseleman Shemach, do it for the sake of your name. Aseleman Yeminach, do it for the sake of, uh, when it says Yeminach, meaning the, the right hand of God that is right now in the diaspora. Aseleman Turatach, do it for the sake of the Torah that right now is, a, is, is very low in the world comp in comparison to what it was in yesteryears. Aseleman Kedushatach, and do it for your for the holiness that is right now forsaken amongst the, the nations. Leman Yedidecha for that the Jewish people will be redeemed. Hoshia Yuminecha and give us our salvation by way of miracles. Vaanebakashutenu and answer our prayers and it wraps up again. Once again, we're in this like this sandwich of this pasuk. On top, then on the bottom, and elokain etzor in the middle. I'm going to read the English version straightforward, so you can get a feel for the text. It says, "My God, guard my tongue from evil, and my lips from speaking deceitfully." To those who curse me, let my soul be silent, and let my soul be like dust to everyone. Open my heart to your Torah, then my soul will pursue your commandments. As for all those who design evil against me, speedily nullify their counsel and disrupt their design. Act for your name's sake, act for your right hand's sake, act for your sanctity's sake, act for your Torah's sake. That your beloved ones may be given rest. Let your right hand save and respond to me. May the expression of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you. Hashem, my rock, my redeemer. He who makes peace in his, in, in his heights, may he make peace upon us and upon all his, uh, Israel. Amen. So that is the text. That is the first layer of understanding the text. Let's dissect the text. I want to get a deeper understanding of Elokai. The first item has to do with speech. Why? Why is the first thing have to do, why is the first lesson have to be about speech? Well, what we know is always that the first lesson is always the biggest lesson. So there's something really, really beautiful here on what we're saying first at the end, at, uh, at the Lokai. It says, it says that a person is used to sully his lips with gossip. People like to talk Lashon Hara. They like to uh, talk about other people. He says, anybody whose lips are filled with gossip, his prayers are an abomination. How dare he utter prayers and ask for a favor from God with the same lips that have been used as an instrument of evil. In other words, the first thing that we're saying, Elokai, Netzor Leshoni Mera. Hashem, I want you to guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking deceitfully. Why? Because how can the mouth that sins with the, the mouth that sins also ask for things from God? So we pray from Hashem that we shouldn't be in that place. Now, what's interesting over here is that when we began the Amidah, we said, Hashem sef, Adonai sefatai tiftach, ufiya Notice that the beginning of the Amidah 
and the end of the Amidah have a correlation. It's about the opening of the lips, the thing that the, the speech that we say. And it says that when we say that, Lord, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. And over here we conclude that what did we ask for continued permission to use our lips. Meaning we see that from the beginning of the Amidah to the end of the Amidah, we're fully aware of the dangers of an undisciplined, uh, undisciplined tongue. So we help, we call upon Hashem to help us guard our organ of speech. We tell Hashem, Hashem, we need help with this tongue. We need help with this mouth. Open it up so we can say your, uh, so we, so we can declare your praise in the beginning. And at the end, we tell Hashem that guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking deceitfully. <coughs> so Midrash Vayikra brings a, 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 a beautiful Midrash from Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. We used to have a servant by the name of Tavi. One day, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel tells the servant, Tavi, bring me some good food. So Tavi, who was famous for being a wise servant, went and brought him back a tongue. You know, to eat, tongue. So one day, Rabban Whose Shimon tongue? Gamliel tells him, Whose tongue was it? A cow's tongue. Okay. One time, Rabban Shibon Gamliel tells him, Go bring me bad food. Something bad to eat. Tavi brings him a tongue. So, Rabban Shibon Ben Gamliel asks Tavi, He says, How could it be that the same food can be both, both good and bad? So Tavi replied, When a tongue speaks properly, there's nothing better. But when it does not, there's nothing worse. And this is what we see over here, how we have to be very careful. And that's what we're praying for over here. We really, really have to be, we, we, we're praying that this mouth that we're using to say God's name, see all these tefillot, that it used properly. And not that as soon as we leave the shul or as soon as we leave the class, you know, it's talking about this girl and it's talking about that guy and talking about this person over there and that person over there. Lashon hara, lashon hara, you can't. Or kal vachomer, somebody who uses foul language. Or kal vachomer, somebody who uses, you know, uh, you know, that his mouth is a trash can during the day and at the, in the night, you know, three times a day he comes and puts God's name in his mouth. Hashem says over here that how dare he utter prayers and ask for a favor from God with the same lips that have been used as an instrument of evil. Furthermore, Rabbi Mansour in his book wrote a beautiful point that I wanted to share with you as well. He says, why are we asking a Kadosh Baruch Hu to help us with our speech? Don't we have free will? Don't we have free will? Can't we decide for ourselves? He says, may God restrain my tongue from evil. Meaning, we're asking Hashem that we should avoid all forms of forbidden speech, like slander, like gossip, but this is our responsibility. We have to be responsible for what comes out of our mouth. Why are we asking God to, to, to restrain our tongue from evil? It's our responsibility. It's not God's responsibility. We have Bechira, Chofshit. We have free will. So, even though that we have free will and free will establishes that we have the capacity to choose, act, and speak properly or improperly. However, this does not mean that we cannot or should not pray for Hashem's assistance in helping us have self-control that is needed to say the right things. Meaning, the entire Amidah, we pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for every single thing. Why shouldn't we pray to God to help us not talk to Hashem could give us something in the past to help us to clean. Correct. So, we're, so we know it's bad. We know we don't want to use our mouth in the wrong way. So we're asking Hashem for help. What's wrong with that? If there, who can, who's the only one that can help us with every single thing in our life? Only Hashem. So why should we not involve Him also in saying we don't want to talk to Hashem That we don't want evil speech. So part of the tefillah over here, Elukai. Help me with evil speech. I think this is beautiful. It's beautiful that we're asking Hashem to help us stop with Lashon Hara.
as we ask Hashem to be involved in every single act that we do, we want to act properly, and we ask God to help us succeed in this effort as well. Furthermore, there's a Hafez Chaim, since we're talking about evil speech, of course, you know, the Hafez Chaim is famously known for the laws of Lashon Hara. There is a, 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 a tefillah that he authored that some people have a custom to say it every day after tefillah. Once again, in the, in the book, in the Sidur of Rav Yora Michael Abergel, in the book of, in the Sidur, Kol Rina Yeshua, you'll find at the end of the book, this prayer. And I wanted to spend a few minutes, since we're on the subject, uh, to read you the, the preface, and then the actual tefillah. It's only one paragraph, it's two paragraphs, but it's good to hear. It says that the Hafez Chaim, before he passed away, saw by way of Ruach HaKodesh, that there's going to be a tremendous amount of gossip in the time of Ikvit the Mashiach. And because of that, he authored this following tefillah that one should say on a regular basis. He says, and whoever says this tefillah is going to be saved from punishment that comes, the, the harsh punishment that comes with evil speech. Because it is very well known that every single word that a person emits from his mouth it's captured by an angel, taken up to the heavens, and they get judged on it. Not a single word does it go to wait. As it says in the Pasuk, Ki yolich et hakol ubar yagid davar. Kohelet says, Ki what's of shamayim? It's not a bird, it's an angel. What does the angel does? Yolich et hakol, he takes the call, what? The words that come out of your mouth. He takes it, yolich et hakol, and he delivers it. Bar Knafaim Yagid Davar. Bar Knafaim is an angel. He goes and he testifies against. So be careful with the speech and what you say. Angels, their job is to grab your words, bring them to the Shammai, and to prosecute. As it says also, Kamar Chacham Bidvarecha, he zaher ma kotl shacharecha, ki oznaim la kotel. He says, be careful because the walls have ears. And even the walls will testify. They say that in the time, you know, after 120 years, when they go to court, and a person will say, nobody saw me. They say, okay, bring the brick from the wall to testify. Bring the fly on the wall to testify. Bring the LED light to testify. Everything can, can testify. You have to know that every word has weight. He says sometimes with one word, you, a person can ki wipe out an entire family or even an entire nation. And this is all because a person wasn't careful with his speech, with his words, and he said the wrong thing. He says, especially when somebody says the wrong word and there's several people around him, how big is the punishment of that individual? That's why it's warranted that a person says this tefillah on a regular basis and, get a, and understand the words and learn from it and also teach it to their children. Not to just say words and to take this tefillah that is uh, uh, auspicious for protection of the lips, protection of the speech, protection of the mouth. Halashon va'enayim. Actually, this tefillah is not just to protect your speech, but to protect your tongue and your eyes. And by protecting your eyes your, and your speech, what you look at and what you uh, talk about, you'll be protected from all sins. And here is the tefillah of the Hafez Chaim, of Tefillah al Shmirat al Hashon. Ribbono shel Olam, Master of the Universe. Yiratzon milfanecha. Yiratzon milfanecha. Let it be uh, in your favor. Let it, let, let it be in your will. That El Rachum v'Chanun, the Merciful uh, God, Shetezakeni hayom v'chol yom, that you merit me today and every day. Lishmor pi ulshoni, that will protect my mouth and my tongue. Milashon hara urchilut umikabalatam. To speak lashon hara, to refrain from gossip, and to hear gossip. Vezaher miladaber al ish yechidi, and to be very careful to speak not even about one person. Vekol sheken miladaber al klal Israel. 
and then even more so to speak about the entire negatively about the entire Jewish nation, or even on or al mem, or even on just a part of the Jewish nation. Remind me to come back to this point. And even more so that I should have some sort of a complaint or 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 or, or so, sort of a resistance on all the ways that Hashem deals with me on a regular basis, whether Hashem is uh, you know tough with me or easy with me, that I shouldn't complain about God. I'll be extremely careful not to speak lies. That person should be very careful not to be a liar, not to uh, 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 clown around too much, not to create a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, fights or machloket, not to be angry, not to speak out of uh, out of pride, and not to be uh, uh, not to be deceitful, and not to be a fraud. And not to embarrass someone, and all the things that are forbidden that have to do with speech. And merit me that the only time that I speak are things that are connected to me and the and, and my uh, the happenings. Nothing that everything that's connected to my soul and to my body and nobody else's. And all my actions and all my speech should just be for the sake of heaven and not for idle chatter. That is the tefillah of the Hafez Chaim. I wanted to go back to this section over here when it says to be very careful not to speak about one person or the entire Jewish people or even a section. Sometimes we get too loose with our speech when I say, Ah, the Ashkenazim. <laughs> you better be careful because if you say something negative about an Ashkenazi, how are you going to go back and get, uh, get, uh, be able to do teshuvah with half of the Jewish uh, uh, population? Or sometimes people like to make jokes on Moroccans or, or Yemenites or, or Kurdim or whatever it is. You make that joke, you made a sin. Now you got to go to every Moroccan in the world and ask for their forgiveness. So you have to be careful even when telling jokes. So one person, of course not. A group of people, of course not. In Kalva Homer, all I'm saying, because you know, even like sometimes the uh, the American Jews or the Israelis or the Jews in Israel, or they're like this, they're rude, they're that, they're that. You have to be careful. You don't know. You might say a thing, and this is like a wholesale. Uh, you know, like you watch yourself, you watch yourself. You're a big, big tzaddik. All of a sudden, you speak negatively about the Israelis. There you go. A million sins, in one shot. Every single Israeli is now slighted. Now you have to go make the shuvah on them. So Chafetz Chaim says, guard your tongue, watch how you speak, weigh out your words before you, you say anything. And this is all, This is all. by the way, we're just still on this one line. We didn't even move. We're still on just on one line to understand this one pasuk because they said, there's so much things going on over here. I said, let's dig. Let's understand fully what this pasuk is about if, if, it's, if it's getting it all this weight and all this importance. Furthermore, the second part it says, that may God restrain my tongue from speaking evil. And my lips from speaking deceit. So, you know, like a person that is misleading or fraudulent, that misrepresent, you know, in a way which we misrepresent our thoughts and feelings, uh, like flattering people who we actually dislike. You know, when you are Armumi, you know, Armumi, when you're sneaky. When you're two-faced, right? You you you're one thing in the heart and one thing uh, in your face, right? So uh, we we tell we tell Kadosh Baruch Hu that to protect my lips from speaking deceit, not to be uh, a two-faced. And we actually learn this uh, the, this quality of how it's important to be real and not to be misleading with your true intentions and your true and your true thoughts from Yosef and his brothers, as it says that Yosef's brothers were unable to speak to him peacefully. Why? Because they had negative feelings towards him because of the whole thing with the, with the Kutonet. So they, they didn't like him. They didn't like him. And it says over there, Velo yachlu de shalom. The, the Rashi says over there that they couldn't even say hello to him. Mitoch genotam lamanu shivcham. He says from this negative uh, attribute that the Pasuk is telling us, we can actually see the beauty in their character. That they weren't one in the heart and one in the 
by, by meaning they wouldn't hate him and say, Hi, Yosef, how's everything? Yeah, we love you, you're great, you're our favorite brother, baby brother, let me give you a noogie. No, they didn't do that. <clears throat> they, do, they didn't like him and they wouldn't even talk to him, they wouldn't even say hello to him because they were, they were real. They weren't two faced. So we say over here, that we shouldn't uh, uh, flatter and uh, be flattering to people that we actually dislike. So over here we're asking that Hashem always ensure that we speak and present ourselves honestly, which is also an unbelievable, uh, uh, unbelievable part that the first thing that we're talking about is that Ohain Soshimira, the way we use our speech. Now we move to the second part. How this is, you know, the, the the importance of being honest and genuine and not to be two faced. Or one in the face and one in the heart is, you know, is the first line. Now we get to the second group of supplications, and the second group of supplications starts where ul kalelai nafshi tedom. Keep in mind, we just had nineteen berachot. What are all these things that we're asking from? Look at all these like these are huge, huge like a character. Uh, uh, refinement concepts that we're dealing with right at the end of the Amidah. In other words, we're, we're asking a lot over here at the end. Just what we're asking Hashem as far as our speech is one thing. Look at the second section. That my soul shall be silent for those who curse me. I can tell you right now, this is not going to sit well with anyone. Tell me one guy that gets cursed out and stays silent. Nowadays, right away, right away we attack back, right? The whole thing is, you know, you get me, I'll get you harder, right? There's no such thing. Somebody curses one person, he just stays silent. Uh, and, and like it's a, a form of piety or being righteous. But over here, we're, we're, we're praying for it every day. So are you a liar? Are you asking for something that you're not really uh, going to be about? You can't say things that you're not, you, you can't ask for something if that's not who you are and if that's what you want. So, are you okay with somebody cursing you and you staying silent? Does it even make sense? Or are we even understanding this correctly? So, Chazal in Masechet Shabbat on the 88th page says, it speaks very highly of Hane'elavin ve'enan olvin. Shomim herpatan ve'en mashivin. He says there's a group of people in the world these are the greatest people on the planet. Which are, uh, which people are they? The ones that get insulted and don't respond back, don't insult back. The ones that hear people insulting them and they don't respond. Those who are insulted but do not insult, who hear their disgrace but do not respond. Great reward is promised to those who remain silent in the face of insults and, deg and, and degradation. Because the natural tendency is to react angrily if somebody's going to do that. So stop for a second and think about yourself. Somebody in your workplace curses you, embarrasses you, shambles you. Maybe at home, maybe at work, maybe in the street, maybe in the supermarket. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a stranger. What is your reaction? So you might say, I get back at them right away. Whoever it is. Nobody talks like that to me. Right? That's maybe one way. You might say, you know what? In the at home, I, you know, I can figure it out. I'll work on myself. It's my midot. Sometimes you get that from people that you know. But in the street, no. Or vice versa. You won't tolerate it at home and in the street you'll ignore it. But nevertheless, we see that we're still not 100% accepting of anybody talking to us like that. But yet, Masechet Shabbat says, those are the greatest people in the world. As it says in, Pas in uh, Pasuk in Yov, the Kadosh Baruch Hu tole, uh, tole, tole eretz al belima, that Hashem suspends the earth on nothingness. Meaning, that a per the Kadosh Baruch Hu suspends the entire earth on a, uh, on a person that stops himself from uh, uh, responding to an insult. Masechet Chulin on the 89th page on the first page, side continues to say, "En haolam itkayem ela bishvil mishe bolem etatzmo b'shat meriva." The world is sustained 
only for one who stops himself during a fight. There's a fight, somebody is coming at you, and you know what you do? You don't respond, you don't react, you stay calm. You're boiling inside, but you're not reacting. They say, for that guy, the world stands. When he's provoked, when he's insulted, when he's wrong, and his instinct is to shout in, in, in anger. And I can tell you, this is a real thing. People deal with it every single day. With children, with spouses, with, with, with co-workers, with friends, with strangers. It's a natural reaction. Somebody hurts you, whether it's your feelings or even physically, you want to get right back at them. It takes enormous strength and self-restraint to remain silent. And the reward for doing so is immense. Anybody who stays silent when he's being attacked, it's immense. This is why, since there's a tremendous amount of reward for such a reaction to that action, so what are we doing right here? Let's go back to the Beracha. What does it say? Ulm kalelai, nafshi tedom. Look what we're asking for. That when people curse me, when people agitate me, people come at me, let me be able to be quiet. Do you understand what we're praying for? We want this. We want it. We want this challenge. Disrespect me. Yell at me. Provoke me. And I'll stay quiet and I won't answer. And there's a great reward in the Shemaim. A hundred percent. As a matter of fact, the next section says that that moment is an et ratzon. It's an auspicious time, a favorable time for prayer. That the sages tell us that that when a person gets into that moment, when he's embarrassed, when he's challenged, and he and he closes his mouth, that moment is et ratzon. Pray for something. You get it. You, you get it. it. So I'm going to tell you two stories here. John, excuse me. Uh, I think my husband told me one time, if you don't answer the person, all your sins go away. Is that true? Correct. <coughs> because they say <coughs> it's halbanat <coughs> panim, right? Halbanat <coughs> panim is like it's if you kill it's like you killed him. So if he's killed, he's sinless. If he's sinless, he's blessed. Mm -hmm. So we there's a story of a guy that was part of this community. Uh, he got married. Ten years, no children. He ended up moving to Israel. He moved to Israel and he uh, went to a new shul. He's brand new, like an Israeli, American, that moved back to Israel. Ten years, no children. And, uh, you know, it's maybe his first, second, third week in the shul. And he still is like uh, with the ways of how things are in America. And he did something that bothered some guy in the shul. Either he got up at the wrong time, he said the wrong thing, and the guy jumped at him. He told him, who do you think you are? What are you doing? Get out of here, never come back. And he said he felt so embarrassed, he was speechless. He says even if he wanted to answer, he couldn't. He says he, he got shut down. But he knew, he learned the, 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 the Gemara. He says, but he knew. That in, in a moment like this, it's an etatzon. What did he do? He came. He, he went down from the bima. He went right to the hechal. He put his head in the in the thing and says, "Baby boy, please." <laughs> <laughs> that year, wow. that year, he had a baby boy. You know who he is, Ellie. You know who he is. No, no, it's a What's his name? In my name. No way. What's his name? I forgot. You know him. I know him. Yeah. Okay, him. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. I'm telling you, he took. So again, he told us the story. He came here with his child on his lap, and he's telling us, "Let me tell you a story." Wow. Okay. So that's number one, a true story. So 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 look what we're praying for. When I'm challenged, then I block my mouth. I don't say nothing, and it's at its own. Now that you know this, you know, it's, it, God forbid, we're not looking for confrontation, right? But it's a blessing. It's a cleanup process. I'll tell you, Baruch Hashem, every once, you know, you know when, you, when you're in front of people, sometimes you get challenged. 
a lot of times when I'm here in the Bima, some people are, they challenge me in my, you know, being an Israeli with Moroccan descent and a Brooklyn, New Yorker that came to Florida, there's a lot of layers that I got to work through in order to be a tzaddik. It's not so simple. So when somebody comes and challenges you, sometimes you want to go, oh, but, and, 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 I, and I always, I'm always on, stand, uh, on, the, on guard that I shouldn't react the way that my DNA wants me to react. And, you, and sometimes you wait that, God forbid, that should happen, that you, you, you train yourself. As soon as that happens, it should never happen, but if it happens, you know where you're going. Call me. You, know, you go <laughs> right over there, you go right over there. And, that, and to add to what Yudit uh, said, a lot of people that have witnessed somebody getting embarrassed in public, they run to him and they say, bless me, please. But there's been stories that people have gotten big, big yeshuot in their life from somebody that got embarrassed and was able to get a bit of help. A woman can do that too? Yeah. Okay. 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 Furthermore, it says... Well, like everybody insult me, insult me. (laughs) Now, here is the beauty of this class. We've been saying this for thousands of times. But we just spent a half hour learning it deeper. And we totally understand... What we're paying for. At first we said, Am I out of my mind praying for people to, to curse me? But you go a little bit deeper and you understand, no, 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 it's not. When you're going to get challenged, when somebody is going to come and challenge you, and you're going to have a reaction that you want to retaliate, don't retaliate, and you get an etratzon, a cleanup process. As a matter of fact, I remember, I'll share my personal story, is that... I won't share it, but there is, uh, there, 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 is, there is times when you get challenged and it's very, very difficult. And when you do, you hope, you hope that you, you, it's a cleanup process and, uh, and, and just, just be on guard. It's a good thing. Let's continue. Furthermore, another layer to this, uh, to this part, it says a serene person will not allow himself to be get dragged down by feelings of anger or resentment. Chovot HaLevavot talks about this level called Hishtavut. What's Hishtavut? Equilibrium. It's a, it's a state of tranquility. Chovot HaLevavot, Rebbeinu Bahia says that a person should strive to have this demeanor in his character called Hishtavut, an equilibrium, a state of tranquility, that it makes no difference to him it makes no difference to the humble one, to the well-balanced person, whether he's praised or insulted by others. His self-esteem comes from within himself. In other words, imagine you get to the point, if somebody tells you you're the greatest person in the world, or you're the, piece, or you're the biggest piece of garbage, for you, it's identical. It doesn't phase you one way or the other. Chovot HaLevavot says, if you can not get swayed in your emotions, in a way where uh, you're more than welcome to take from the guy section. There's a lot of stuff over here. Chavot uh, 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 is saying, if you're able to have composure in your character, in your emotions, that, when, that you uh, react the exact same way when you're being praised, or when you're being insulted, when your self-esteem is so protected within you that nobody can hurt you, nobody can get a rise out of you, now you are getting to the part of what? That you are able to uh, 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 stay silent to those who curse me. Let my soul be silent. I thought that was also something that, uh, you know, pro level, let's call it, right? That's a pro level when you can get to the point where no matter what people tell you, you process it in the same way. It says, and my soul shall be like dust to all. Once again, like, okay, here we go. I don't want to be dust, right? I don't want to, you know, you always think of these things like, this is so lowly, this is dust. What? I, I don't want to be dust. I want to be, uh, I want to have honor. I want to have kavod. I want to have, uh, 
you know, be honorable. Why do I want to? Why, why do I want to pray to be dust? So again, if we just start off like that, we say, no, I don't want to be. But in five minutes from now, we're going to be dust. We want to be dust, right? Just like we want to be cursed, quote unquote, right? When a person curses, yeah, I want to be silent. Why? Right? The brachad that comes with it. So all these things that we think that we don't want, we're actually praying for on a daily basis. It's good to understand what are we praying for and what is the true meaning of it. So when it says, "Venafshi ka'afar lakol tiye," it says that people curse and insult only those who they feel threatened by. When when they see something impressive in a when 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 somebody sees something impressive or a person that's impressive and accomplished, it arouses a feeling of insecurity, and it leads us to find some fault, and we need to offend them in order to protect our ego. That's why we pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that we should appear to other people as insignificant as dirt. So they do not feel threatened by us and will not insult us. In other words, what we are doing now is we're connecting it. We said, There's going to be people that are going to want to curse. So if there's going to be people that are going to want to curse me, why? Because they're envious, because they're jealous, because they have... Uh, you know, they, they have feelings of insecurity and people that are insecure and uh, they're jealous of people that are impressive and accomplished. So you know what? If he sees me so high, let them see me so low. Why? If they see me so low, they won't curse me. Again, Why do I want to be like the dust? Because the, the people that curse are people that look for people that are high levels and they're envious and they're jealous and that's why they want to curse, that's why they want to challenge, that's why they want to conflict. But let me appear to them lowly and by appearing lowly, they won't even engage with me. But don't let put people, people put you down. Also. No, no, of course not, of course not. We're not, we're, nobody's going to put nobody down. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Nobody. <laughs> Anybody knows that song? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, pre teshuva. <laughs> so we don't. Nobody's gonna put us in the corner. Nobody's gonna push us around. Nobody's going to. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not uh, pushovers. This is spiritual work. It's how we carry ourselves in. Uh, how we carry ourselves. Uh, uh, spiritually, what's the mindset, right? To nullify the ego. That's what we're trying to do because the minute you start to feed the ego, ego stands for emitting God out. So what do we want? We want to nullify the ego. How? By understanding these concepts. These concepts make us don't think so great of ourselves and we, uh, we know how to interact with Hashem in the right way. And these are the, you know, these are the, the, the master keys to activating all the issues that we want in our lives. We see that Masechet Shabbat was saying that the greatest people in the world, the ones that are quiet, the ones that take the abuse, the ones that don't say a word. Why? Because by doing that, by not increasing conflict in the world, by being quiet, they are able to merit to open miracles by way of nature. So that's why it says over here, and my soul shall be like dust to all. We pray that we reach the level where we do not feel even offended. Meaning what? We pray that the strength to remain silent when we feel insulted. But now we pray for an even higher level where we are like dirt and not affected by all insults and slurs. Meaning, does dirt get affected by anything? No. So we want to have like... The, ad, the, the the character of dirt, which means what? Nothing bothers us. They can say whatever they want to say. It doesn't bother, doesn't bother us. Tosfot says on the Gemara, just as the ground exists eternally, never disappear. Similarly, we pray that our offspring shall endure for eternity. What is the Just like the ground is always going to be around, we say that what? that me and my children always be around like the dirt as well, meaning that we're always going to be here. Because you can see that all these people, they come and go. You know, who wins everyone? The dirt wins everyone, right? Because they walk on the dirt, they stamp on the dirt, they, 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 they throw on the dirt, everything, they abu we abuse dirt, right? We abuse the earth. But at the end, the earth has the last laugh, because who, what, what happens after 120 years? 
Everyone's buried in the dirt and the dirt is on top. We see that anybody who carries himself like dirt eventually will come out on top. As a matter of fact, we mentioned it in the Rosh Chodesh class. I'll mention it again over here. In Masechet Chulin, on the 89th page, on the first side, it says, Gedolama Shinebra be Moshe, Yoter Mikulam. It says, What was said about Moshe is the greatest one of all. Shari Avram Avinu Amar, Vanochi, Afar Vaefer. David Amel Hamar, Vanochi, Tolad Veloish. Moshe Varun Avu, Venachnu, Ma, Kitalino Alenu. We see that the greatest spiritual giants. Of, uh, of Jewish history had this ideology, had this thinking. Avraham Avinu says, I am dust and ashes. That's Avraham Avinu. So if Avraham Avinu says dust and ashes, what does that mean? Nothing gets to him. Nothing gets to him. No, no one, no one can, uh, can get a rise out of him. And he said, and not only that, I'm not, I'm not above anyone. Everyone is above me. I honor every single person. David HaMelech HaMer, Vanechi Tolad Veloish. It says about David HaMelech, he's like a worm, not like a person. Moshe HaRebelu says, Venachnu Ma, what are we? So we see that even the greatest giants in, in, spirit, in, in Jewish history took this approach of, be, of nothingness, which is a great spiritual approach because it doesn't come from a place of ego. It comes from a place of nullifying yourself for the sake of heaven. In regards to the worm, I found a couple of nice things about the worm. Because it says over here, David Amech says, David Amech says he, he's like a worm. What does that mean, like a worm? It says, The worm is soft and the tree is hard. He says, similarly to the Jewish people, that we are have the same type of, uh, of uh, power with our tefillah. Just like the worm is able to attack the, the strong tree with its mouth, similarly, the Jewish people have the same power with their tefillah. Hainu. Hatolat afal katuntayesh bakoach. Even though the worm is so small, it has power, great power. More power than any other animal in the world. This small world, worm has the power to, uh, to make big cedar trees fall. How? It chews little by little on the bark, little by little on the, uh, on the, on the tree. And as it eats it from the inside, eventually the tree falls. Where put a lion or an elephant or any other animal, they can't put down cedar trees. So how is it possible that all these huge animals in the jungle can't put down a cedar tree, but a worm, a small little worm can? Because it has the power of its mouth, right? Little by little, it eats it, eats it, eats it, eats the, the tree until it has no longer any power on the inside, and it falls. Similarly, is the power of the Jew with it, their prayer. A person might think, me, a simple person with a simple uh, tefillah, I have the power to, to defeat all these enemies, defeat all these decrees, the bad decrees, evil decrees in the world. It says, then go look at the worm. It looks tiny. It looks weak. It looks like it has no power, but it's the strongest one out of all the creations. No other creation in the world has the strength of the worm, that it can put down a tree where no other animal can have that type of strength. Similarly is the Jew. Don't discount your prayer. Don't discount your tefillah. Yeah, the simple Jew, the simple tefillah has the same power as that worm to nullify decrees. So when we see anti-Semitism, when we see what's happening in Israel, we see all these harsh decrees, believe in your, in your tefillah. Believe in the power that we have. Furthermore, it actually talks about war. It says... There's a rabbi called Rabbi Moshe, Rabbi Moshe Mordechai Scholzinger. He says, Kama tipshim hem anashim. He says, how stupid are the people that as soon as there's a bomb threat on TV, what's the first thing that they tell them? Run to the bunkers, make sure you take water, 
uh, breathe, uh, uh, relax, wear masks, sit quietly, and, and, and just relax, just, re just relax. So the rabbi says, and it's such a grave danger when the, the, the buildings are being bombarded with bombs. Don't tell them to relax and drink water. Tell them, Lomar Tehilim, say Tehilim. And Kochenu Alamatfila, our power is in our prayer. And we have a, a guy in Shul that famously says, Tehilim, Negetilim. If you want to you know, uh, fight the, the, the missiles, the way you fight Tilim is with Tehilim, that you say Tehilim. Furthermore, We said We just spoke about how a person say, my soul should be silent for those who curse me, and my soul should be like dust to all. Now we move to the third section. Open my heart to your Torah, and may my soul run after your commandments. So this is very nice. It says, Open up in my heart. Betoratecha, take the word betoratecha, bet toratecha, two torot. Which one is it? Torah shebichtav, betorah shebealpe. That Hashem should open up our hearts to the written Torah and to the oral Torah. And not only that, that we should run after the mitzvot. Why? Because any time that the Yetzhara tells, whenever you want to do a mitzvah, and you start to hear your mind telling you later tomorrow, not now, then what does that mean? That's the Yetzirah telling you, to, he's trying to get you not to do the mitzvah. When it says over here, V'achem mitzvodecha tirdof nafshi, what do we have to do? We have to run after mitzvot. Why? When we have a chance to do a mitzvah, when do we do it? Immediately, now. The minute you hear to say a mitzvah later, I'll give tzedakah later, uh, I'll pray later, I'll learn later, that's the Yetzirah trying to convince you not to do the mitzvah now, and eventually you won't do it at all because he's going to keep convincing you to push it off, push it off. Pushing off is the evil inclination. Running to a mitzvah is you now. That's the, the approach that we have to do. Okay. We'll go and wrap it up with the last few lines, and I think I might save some of the supplications for the next lesson. It says, in Nitzor we, Shoni, we, we, you know, we've spoken earlier how we want Hashem to guard our, our mouth, and then we ask for Ptach Libi Betoratecha, that Hashem should open up our hearts to Torah learning. So what is the connection? So I saw something beautiful over here, it says, Even though that good and evil is in the hands of you, in the hands of the person, regardless, we ask Hashem, help us to choose good. And then we continue to say, We ask Him to open up our hearts for Torah learning. Why? Because if we don't refrain from speaking evil speech or using our speech in a negative way. No, that the Torah that comes with a person who speaks Lashon Hara, it's worthless. Netzor Lashoni, in the beginning of the Beracha, protect my mouth, protect my speech. After that, we're saying to open up our hearts for Torah. Why? Because a person that speaks slander, gossip, and learns Torah, his Torah is worthless. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, it says, Nafshi ke'afar tiye v'ftach libi b'toratecha, the connection between, uh, uh, you know, the, the, our guarding our mouth and learning Torah. It says, Im adam masim atzmo ka'ayuga zos she'akol dashin ba, tabudo mitkayim be'ado. He says, anybody who humbles himself, like they say, like the, you know, like, that he's, uh, he feels insignificant like dirt, meaning he doesn't hold too much of himself, 
He says that guy, his learning is always going to be strong and be liked by God. So that's what we said, that, that we ask from Hashem, In other words, when we're saying that we want to be like dirt, it's not like we want to be dirt. We just want to distance ourselves from a life of chasing honor, a life of, of, lots of, of, of acting out of pride, and, and to be haughty. Because those are the things that delay a person from chasing Torah and actually learning Torah properly. One final point in regards to the Shekhinah, it says, big, big reward for those that are, that include in their prayer, Tzayra Shechina. Remember, we spoke about this in the Tanya class. When a person is able to uh, to pray for the sorrow that the Shechina is feeling from the sins that we perform while we're in the diaspora. And this is why any any person who includes in his prayer the sorrow of the Shechina, he's going to be able to actually uplift the Shechina and actually see the Shechina when it comes into uh, into reality in our lives. Guys, it's too late. I have to stop. Uh, I think what we'll do next time is we'll wrap up this last section to, and then we'll do the Ose Shalom all together. Tov, we had a very, very deep insight to literally four lines. Uh, of the Amidah. I think next time we need to start on time so we don't finish so late. And uh, and we'll come back to... Oh, wait, wait, no. uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I want to do one last thing and then we could... Uh, that can get tied into Ose Shalom. One last section over here because it's the number fourth uh, uh, concept. V'chol hakamim alay l'ra'a so what do we say about that? We said that anybody who has anyone for all those who design evil against me speedily nullify their counsel and disrupt their design. So when a person pursues God's commandment, he's not pursued by enemies and evildoers. Uh, and we know that the you know, who had who thinks bad about us and Hashem should ruin their thoughts and ruin their uh, their plans. The famous one is who? Bilam. Remember Bilam? He, he had all this plan, all these thoughts. The Jewish people didn't know what was going on. But Hashem foiled his thoughts. A lot of times also we see a lot of terrorism, but we don't know how much terrorists, you know, blew up while fixing a bomb or they changed their mind, or they were going to do it in this place, and then they ended up doing another place. This Berecha over here actually tells us of how Hashem ruins the plans, the thoughts, and, uh, and the counsels, and disrupt the design of all the evildoers. That's it for tonight. And Be'ezat Hashem, the next time, uh, we'll wrap up the last section, and we'll continue with Oseh Shalom. Shashem, Be'ezat Hashem, Sameach Otchem. Be'ezat Hashem.